This is unit eight, day three. We're working on the areas of triangles. There's a great YouTube video that talks about how the area of a circle uh, is calculated and where it's made from. So we learned that pi r squared, you've used that formula for many years, Remember that whenever you're calculating area, that's going to be the radius squared. Squared is something that happens to your units when you're talking about area for whatever the shape, a triangle, a rectangle, any of the polygons. So you always get squared. So that's even true here for a circle. So you start to compare that to our circumference where it's pi d or 2 pi r. A lot of people, when they're writing out their formulas, are using part of the 2 pi r and part of the pi r squared to get 2 pi r squared and crazy formulas like that. Understand that area has the square, circumference does not. So we'll come down to example number one, where we notice that we have a radius. So we're going to take the area formula and plug in our radius value. And we'll square that. When we square 4.2, we get 17.64 pi. That is the exact answer of the area. If the question is ever what is the exact value, you want to leave it with the pi symbol next to it. If you want to approximate and round your answer using your calculator, you'd come up with 4.2 squared, which shows where the 1764 comes from, times pi, that's our 5542. And these units are meters, so we would say meters squared. Because in area, we're talking about squares that are making up the circle. They're saying that there would be 52 squares that made up this circle. Each of those squares would be one meter long by one meter long. Assuming that this represented 4.2 meters. Now we know what the area of the circle is. We're looking for the diameter. So we're always starting out with our formula. We know the area is 201. Now we want to figure out for the diameter, we can only calculate the radius, but then we will times that by two to figure out diameter. So we're gonna divide by pi, and that comes out to be just about 64 which is a nice easy number to take the square root of. So r is going to equal the square root of 64, which is 8. So if the radius is 8, the diameter is going to be 2 times the radius, which is 2 times 8, which is 16. So we're going to get 16 inches. Notice how in this unit we have inches, in this one we had our units squared, meters squared, because that was area. This is a length, the diameter is a length, so we don't square the units. Here we have the circumference of 18 pi. Notice how the pi symbol is with the 18. You, you don't ignore it. So the 18 pi is our circumference. So let's start out with the circumference formula. Now we have two different circumference formulas we could use. We'll use the one with the r, the radius, 2 pi r, because when we are going to come down and calculate area of the circle, we know we also need the radius. So we need to calculate radius. So to solve for our r, we're going to divide by 2 pi. 
Now notice over here the pi's cross out, the two's cross out, you're left with your r. On this side, this isn't something you need a calculator for. The exciting part of having the pi connected with the 18 is that when you divide, the pi's cross out. So whenever you see the pi connected in a, in a question, that's actually an advantage. You want that pi there to make solving nice and clean. And now 2 goes into 18 nine times. So the radius of this circle is 9. So if we know the radius is 9, we can now use the area formula to help calculate that value. So we have 18 pi is our exact answer. So we're going to take our 9 squared, or 81, sorry, 81 pi. We're going to take our 9 squared to get 81 and times that by pi. That gives us an approximate value because it's going to be rounded. We're not going to do all those digits. 254.47 and those are inches because it's a square, uh, an area, we square those. So 254.47 inches squared. On the next page, we're looking at this Detroit style pizza company in St. Clair Shores. They've earned the title of world's best pizza back in 2012. They have a small pizza, a medium pizza, and a large pizza. They have an 8 inch, 12 inch, and 16 diameter. So you've got to recognize that key word. It's the diameter. The cost of these pizzas are $5.99, $7.99, and $9.99. What we want to calculate is which size of or which size is a better deal for the money. So what we're looking for is which one has a lower cost per square inch? That's what we're trying to determine. So we're going to need to figure out what is the area so we can figure out the square inch aspect of this problem. So let's start out with diameter. We have an 8 inch diameter, a 12 inch, and a 16 inch diameter. Once you have a diameter, you can figure out what the radius is. So we divide each one of these by 2. So we're now going to have a radius of 4, 6, and 8. From that radius, we're now able to figure out area, and the area is pi r squared. So pi 4 squared, which is going to be 16 pi. Or pi 6 squared, which is 36 pi. And pi 8 squared, which is 64 pi. Now we know the area of each of our pizzas. The small pizza, the medium pizza, and the large pizza. For each one of those, we're now going to calculate what the cost per square inch is. So we're going to start with the small, and then talk about the medium, and then the large pizza. For the small pizza, the cost was five ninety nine. The medium and the large pizza both had larger amounts. Uh, it was costing more. And then the area for the small we calculated out to be sixteen pi. We can put that into a decimal if you wish. And that would be fifty point twenty seven. Uh, the 36 pi 
comes out to 113. Point one zero because the seven would round the nine up to a ten and it would carry over the one and sixty four pi gives us two hundred one point zero six the one does not change the six it's not five or bigger so this table that we're developing here doesn't have any new information the cost was all part of the original question. The area was all what we had already calculated. Now what we want to figure out is the cost per square inch. So to do cost per square inch, it says right here how to set up your fraction. Cost, which is money, divided by square inch, which is area. So we're going to take our 599 and we're going to divide that by the 50.27 and we're going to get just about 0.12 so they're saying that that's going to be 12 cents for every inch of pizza so you, you take your small pizza you break it into small inch by inch squares and each one of those would be 12 cents now we'll take our 799 and divide that by 113.10 and we're going to get 7 cents. And then our 999 divided by our 20106 gives us just about 5 cents for every square inch. So that's showing us that the large pizza, which probably isn't much of a surprise, the large pizza is the best deal. So which size is the better deal for the money? The large pizza is the best deal. And I gave my explanation by showing my work on why that was true. Now we're going to work with the area of this wall. We're going to paint it. We're obviously not going to paint where this door is. So we need to figure out the area of what you might call a shaded region. If you call the wall the shaded part, find the area of the shaded region and then we're going to calculate how many cans of paint that would be needed to paint that, assuming that each paint can covers 200 feet squared, 200 square feet. So to answer this, you need to come up with a plan. This is somewhat of a tricky problem. What would be your plan to figure out the area of our wall? If we knew the total area, which is 20 times 12, that gives you everything, including the door. Now, in most cases, that's probably good enough estimation of how much paint you need. But if we want to be a little bit more exact, we're going to subtract out the, the door portion because we're not going to paint where the door's at. So we need to find the wall area and then we're going to minus the door area. That will give us the total amount that we're going to need. Well the wall or the rectangle here is 20 times 12. Now we're going to look at the area of this door. The door is a funny shape. It's not completely a circle, it's not completely a rectangle it's made up of a rectangle and a circle. So this rectangle is 9 times 4. And we have this other portion which is the curved, it's called a semicircle because it's half of the area of a circle. What is the radius of that circle? 
What do you think? Where could you figure out? It doesn't say here what the radius is. Down here it says that this rectangle is four feet all the way across. So it's four feet as the diameter. That leaves us with a two foot radius. So when we calculate area using our pi r squared, because this is half of a circle, we're going to use half pi r squared. The r is 2, and we square that. Now when you do your calculation over here, be sure that you subtract the entire door area. So we need brackets around the entire door, because you don't want to subtract 36 and add the circle. We're not painting the circle. We want to be sure to subtract the rectangle and that half circle. So 12 times 20 is 240. 9 times 4 is 36. Half of this guy comes out to be 6.28. Right? 9 times 4 gives us our 36. And half times pi times 2 squared gives us our 6.28. When we add the 36 and the 6.28 together, we're going to get 42.28. Subtract that. So we're going to add our 36 to get the 42, 28. 240 minus 42, 28 gives us 197.72 feet squared. That's how much feet that there is in this entire wall when we subtract out the door. So now we're going to take our can of paint that covers 100 feet. We'll divide that into here and we'll get 1.97. That's how many cans that you need. The 100 is the square footage. It covers 100 square feet. So how many times does that go into our 197? So we're going to need two cans of paint. Okay, last question. In this figure, the radius for circle A, the big circle, is twice the radius of B. So this radius is twice as big as that guy and it's four times the radius of circle C. So if circle C, let's pick it to be a nice value, we'll call it X, what would the radius of B equal? If this is four times, it takes four radiuses to make up for the larger circle, and it only makes 2 here, so it's 2 times 2x. And here it's going to be 4x. That makes the larger circle 2 times bigger than circle B and 4 times bigger than circle C. So now we have the circumference. That's our 42 pi. If the sum of the circumferences all the way around for each circle is 42 pi, notice how they put the pi symbol on there again. It makes it easier for us to reduce at the end. Okay, we have circle C we have circle B, and we also have circle A. So circle C 
is going to be 2 pi r. And our r value for circle C is just x. The circumference for circle B, 2 pi 2x. And then 2 pi 4x. So what we're trying to solve for is x. We need to know what value of x is going to make this occur. So 42 pi. We have 2 pi x. There's not much we could do with it there. 2 and 2 make 4. So we have 4x pi. And 8x pi. That gives us a total. Collecting our like terms. 2x pi, 4x pi, and 8x pi gives us 14x pi. You could put the x after the 2 or after the pi. It represents the same idea. And we'll divide by the 14 and the pi because we want the x to be by itself. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other. Notice how the pi's cross out. And that leaves us with a value of 3 for our x value. So we look over here and we see that the r value is x. So we now know that the radius is 3. This radius is 6. And this radius is 12. So we're supposed to figure out, find the measure of the segment of AC. Well, here we have an x, which is the radius. For this circle, we have two radiuses. To get all the way across circle B, we have to do a radius and another radius. For circle A, we only have the one radius to work across. So we're taking the x, the 2x, and then another 2x, and then the 4x. That adds up to be 9x. Well, we've learned that 3 is actually your value for x. So this is 9 times 3, which is 27. So AC equals 27. Our last question, we're going to find the total area of all three circles. So what's this? area of the circle, the circle. We want the total of all of them. That means we want to add them all together. Find the total area of all three circles. So we have circle C, circle B, and circle A. Circle C has a radius of x. Well, we know that 3 is the value of x. So the radius is 3. Area equals pi 3 squared. So the area equals 9 pi. For circle B, the area equals pi, the radius squared. Well, if x is 3, then the radius is 6. And in circle A, if we plug in x equals 3, we get a radius of 12. We have a radius of 12 squared, so that's going to give us 144 pi. Now if we want to know, find the total area of all three circles, We're going to take 144, 36, and 9. That's going to give us 189. 189 pi. And these units for each one of these, it's not giving us an exact value. So we would say units squared. Now you can do a decimal with that by timesing that by pi. Gives us 
593.76 units squared. That is the total area of all three circles added together.